differently um, on it. Apple has always think differently. You mentioned Coca-Cola. Uh, it's a pro it's a product. It makes life maybe it makes life more enjoyable. So my question to you is: If I was the CEO of Bud Light, Anheuser Busch, right now, who's just had a fiasco in marketing, their brand has been so destroyed that their uh, their sales over the last month are down nationally twenty seven percent. What would you say to me in a role if we were role playing? And I hired you, Sarah. Can you help us? Our sales are down twenty-seven percent. Um, you know, you're, uh, we've really, we, you know, we just sell beer, and I don't know what we did wrong, but we need to fix it. Can you have any ideas or suggestions? My suggestion would be to get back to the core of who you want to be. I think that when brands try to go in different directions and they tried to maybe be trendy and have this movement. And if I'm remembering correctly, Bud Light is the one that had a trans best date model. Yeah. To be. yeah, they did a little a little marketing with a, a transgender yeah. person who's very popular on TikTok. It offended their, it offended our, I'm still role playing with you. It offended our core um, blue collar uh, men and women who are working picnics, 4th of July pickup trucks, you know, uh, our, our core people, uh, where some of them were offended by it. And My, we lost for 27, and we got a boycott against us now that we might have to lay off thousands of people and truck drivers and beer manufacturers. And it's really hurting us. What should we do, Sarah? I think that they or you have already put it out there. I think you need to make a decision. You need to either cater to that first audience and make the statement of, you know, here's where we're going moving forward. We're sorry we offended. Or you need to embrace what you've done and trust that this new audience is going to appreciate that you've taken a stand and that you have more open and acceptance and maybe invite yourself into a new audience. I think that it's going to take some time anytime you shift audience, that's going to take some time. You probably are going to, if you make a polarizing statement like that, even if some people don't see that as polarizing, if your audience does, it's going to take you some time. You're going to lose some people, but you're going to also gain some people. I think the worst thing that you could do as a company is just waffle in the middle because that's going to lose you both sides. I think you need to make a decision. Who are you as a company? Go back to those core values who is your product for, and you need to lean heavily into that direction and really support and uplift whatever customer base aligns with that. Yeah, I've, I've kind of thought if it's, I, I've run over this question a lot of times in my mind because I love marketing and sales. And I was I always thought if I was the CEO of that company, I would just apologize. I said, we just sell beer. We want people to enjoy a good product. And we're, we're not here to we're not here to proselytize. We're here to sell a good product and hope you enjoy it. And I, I, my advice would be stay out of politics and cultural shifts. Just advertise what your product is. You sell beer, sell beer, talk about the quality of the beer and enjoying the beers and stay, stay away from those things that bring people together. Don't do things that maybe divide people, you know? Yeah. I think it's a tricky thing because there are, I agree. Businesses should not be super heavily involved in politics unless that's their thing. And that's the direction you want to run in. At the same time, I think that if you feel strongly that something matches your core values and you need to talk to a certain crowd and you know that that's going to polarize the other crowd, I know that I've lost business because some of my clients have been in the DEI community, some have been in the LGBTQ community, and I've lost conservative clients. I'm okay with that because I like the clients that I have. They're more enjoyable. I like the people that I work with, but it is, I think, a decision that people need to make of, again, coming back to how much of yourself do you want to share with others? And what's tricky about this, especially as your business gets bigger, is that with social media, there's a lot more transparency. It didn't, people didn't used to know. Who knew who the CEO of Nike was or Coke was? No one knew. No one knew what they did on their free time, what they believed, who they voted for. Now people want to know these things. Everything is getting published. And so I think that that's a really important part of knowing your brand. And even if you don't lead with something or market or advertise a certain belief or view, it's still important that you know what your views are and you know how your audience views things and that you're prepared 
to stand your ground if ever put in that situation. And a lot of that is PR and having talking points of what are the criticisms that someone could have against me? And what are the statements that I would make in response to these criticisms? Because there's always going to be people who criticize. There's always going to be people who don't like. You're always going to do something wrong, always. I think the important part is having enough confidence in knowing that you align with your core values, you're doing the best you can do. If you tell me that my shirt is blue, I'm kind of going to disregard you because I know it's red, so I don't care. If you tell me something that I am not sure on, if you tell me, oh, did you know that only losers wear red? That might rattle my self-confidence for a minute because I have to think about, well, how do I really feel about this? But if I've already decided I like red, winners wear red, and then you tell me, well, I think losers wear red, I would just dismiss you. It doesn't mean anything. I wouldn't react to it. I would just ignore, you know, some, I think someone, a good friend of mine from the South once said, never get in a pissing match with a skunk. Yep. <laughs> I thought, you know, the old thing uh, from my from my parents, European parents, they said never at the dinner table, never talk politics, religion, uh, sex or the latest diet. <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll stay and you'll stay safe. Hey, how about, who has a question here for Sarah? Uh, we uh, real quick.